Hi everyone, so I'm delighted today to be joined by one of my favourite employers, CGG. CGG and Gradcracker have a long relationship. They're in the Gradcracker Five Year Club, they sponsor the oil and gas and science sectors in the Gradcracker Toolkit, and me and Jess have been to see them on numerous occasions, which I'll tell you about a little bit later on. But for now, what I'd like to do is dive straight in and meet the panel. So Owen, uh, we, me and Owen have been working together for years, haven't we, Owen? And Owen has actually been at CGG for over 14 years. Owen's currently on secondment as a recruitment technical advisor, um, but by trade, he's actually a geophysicist and studied at the University of Edinburgh. So Owen, could you just tell us a little bit more about your current role at CGG? Yeah, so basically, um, because we primarily recruit you know, technical people, you know, because we're a technology and science company, particular with a particular focus on obviously on geoscience. Um, the, the actual recruitment itself is then run, is actually run by the geophysicists. So yeah. I effectively run the you know the CV scanning, you know, design the job adverts, review the various stages of the application process, you know, the works, you know, and, and it also uh, <clears throat> some of what I do also goes into the graduate onboarding side as well. Mm -hmm. Which some of these guys might might talk about be able to talk about later. Yeah. Um, yeah, brilliant. And I think it's really interesting as well, that makes it a, a very different that CGG is like that, because when predominantly when we speak to other employers, um, they are, the recruiters are not necessarily from a STEM discipline. So I think that makes it really different about CGG. And I think, you know, when you are going through the application process, you you as students out there watching, um, you are going to be interviewed by people who are techie people, you know, people with a STEM Absolutely. background as well, which is, which makes CDG even more special. Um, so I mentioned doing that you are on secondment. Now, is, is that typical for CDG people to be allowed to go on secondment? Yeah, so I guess, I guess it's, it's, it depends. It's, it's, it's based on business needs. So, yeah. so for instance, typically, I mean, obviously I'm on secondment to recruitment. Some people might go into sales, some people might go into um, training, you know, and then what you might find is actually, you know, like, some of the people who went to come at the training are now still doing training. So it, it just yeah. depends. Uh, there might also be comments to other offices. It's not obviously not happened at all with the coronavirus, yeah. but before coronavirus, you know, we had people transferring to offices around the world as well. You know, if, if a certain speciality was needed, say in Brazil or America or, or Russia or, or wherever. So yeah. there'd be opportunities there. It tends to be based on business need though. And obviously you kind of have to have a, fair amount of experience behind you and whatever it is you you do yeah brilliant and so i mean give us give us a bit of a breakdown then so who who is cgg and what exactly do you do and you've just mentioned there that you've got offices globally so mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about that okay well cgg um the actual uh company is french based uh headquartered in france so we're we're a geoscience company effectively so we are basically by the sciences to the earth. And they're, they're, we work in sectors like natural resources, environmental, uh, which Mackenzie represents, uh, equipment, engineering, you know, you name it, anything, everything to do with the earth, basically. Um, and see, we effectively we represent the intersection of the you know, physical sciences with kind of, um, with, with, with the earth and, and the kind of commercial needs of, of our modern, modern society. Um, as a company, we are kind of effectively divided up into three kind of, units um, so the of roughly equal size so that we all represent the geoscience unit um, mm -hmm. as I say you know the, the scientists we also have a data what we call a multi-client unit which effectively that's a that's effectively our data library so um, we, we have huge amounts of data you know masses and masses of data and that's geological data geophysical data satellite data environmental data you name it um, so we, we have a master own we acquire our own our own huge data sets yeah. Um, which we then license out to people, you know, clients. Um, and then our last sector is our equipment sector. And they are also um, obviously have a big geophysics, geoscience focus, but they also operate in structural health monitoring, defense, aerospace, anywhere where they have a particular, particular specialism in sensors. Um, uh, and so any, anywhere that requires kind of high-end sensors. Yeah. And I think from, from people who are watching um, as well, to mention that Owen's a ge geophysicist um, by trade, but you don't have to have a, a background in geoscience or um, a geophysicist background, do you, Owen, to be able to apply for, for um, CGG's opportunities? Absolutely not. So if you're applying to our geophysicist role, for instance, I mean, just to give you the recent, most recent stats for uh, 2020, 2019, well, I think in 2019, half of our grads were geophysicists, half were physicists. 
yeah. this year, or in 2020, it was uh, three quarter, three quarters astronomy and physics and a quarter in geophysics. So, and actually in, in 2021 so far, our campaign so far, we're actually seeing quite a high proportion of mathematicians. Um, oh, so good. It's, I think the key is that the, so the geophysics role, certainly the, the clues in the name, it's, it's physics, it's physicists doing a bit of doing geology as opposed to the geologists doing physics. Yeah. So, uh, but it's the physics that comes first. Yeah, brilliant. And if you've got an interest in physics, and obviously if part of your degree um, has been you know, involved in physics as well, you can, you can apply to CDG's roles, um, which are on their hub on Grad Cracker, before I forget to mention that. So make sure you go after um, this webinar to take a look and see. So thanks, Owen. What we're going to do now is move on to the grads. We're going to come back to Owen a little bit later on. Um, but from the grads' point of view, they all extensively used Grad Cracker during their job search um, and found their roles on the CGG hub and research CGG on the hub on Grad Cracker. So, Patrick, we are going to start with you, my love. So can you introduce yourself to the audience? Um, where did you go to university and what did you study? Uh, hello, uh, I'm Patrick. I went to the University of Birmingham and I studied for an undergraduate uh, nuclear science and materials and for a postgraduate master's I studied physics and the technology of nuclear reactors. So going back to what Owen said before about uh, uh, CGG not necessarily um, hiring just geophysicists, I came from a physics background that was particle and uh, inorganic material based and I'm now working a job that's wave and organic material based. So really there the lesson learners as long as you have the passion for physics and the um and the, the determination to just want to learn more cg will be very interested in what you have to offer and what so what attracted you patrick to cgg so you've just mentioned that your degree and your masters was you know not not really um, related to cgg as a business and what they do so so what why were you interested in cgg and what made you decide to um, apply to their opportunities well, CGG had a lot to offer, like th at the very basic, very like small things wise. For example, location, it's very easy to get into London, it's very easy to get to Brighton. Uh, it was moderately close for home for me. Um, but I think overall, at least for me personally, um, I would consider myself a physicist over specific, uh, at least when I was at university, over say a nuclear physicist. Uh, I was more enamored by the entire uh, philosophy of physics, as, as it were. Uh, and so I didn't really felt compelled to uh, stay in one particular discipline. And so uh, when I was searching through Grad Cracker and uh, trying to find places to apply to, uh, when I saw CGE was offering um, and uh, everything else that sort of lined up with what I was looking for, uh, the fact that it was a company that was still doing research and do, and applying these uh, physical processes uh, was something that I was uh, very interested in working in at least. So, uh, I, um, that, so, I, so I started to uh, see what would happen if I applied there and obviously things have worked out. And here you are now, Patrick, world famous on a Grad Cracker webinar. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, thanks for that, Patrick. So what Thank we're going you. to do, so Patrick just mentioned the location. So just to put that into perspective, um, CGG is based in Crawley, which is in West Sussex, which is how, how far is the commute into London, Patrick, would you say? Uh, depends, about 40 minutes direct into uh, Victoria and then about similarly 40 minutes down into Brighton, uh, once again, direct. So um, it's, 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 it's incredibly easy and relatively cheap to get right into the center of either of these two major cities. Perfect. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, so we're going to move on to Robin now. So Robin, same question to you. Um, where did you go to university and what did you speak? Hi there, everyone. Um, I was at the University of Oxford um, at Exeter College um, and I was actually studying earth sciences. So it's a bit of a different background to the majority of the um, geophysicists who were mostly physicists. Um, yeah. But in my third and fourth years, I actually uh, did projects that were specializing in geophysics. So I was looking um, at earthquakes and modeling earthquakes and that sort of thing. Um, so that's sort of where my more geology sort of background came into geophysics. Yeah, brilliant. And, and, and why, why choose CGG? Um, so I'd done an, an internship with another company in my third year. Um, or at the end of my third year um, at university. And I sort of quite liked some of the things that I was doing on that, but 
wasn't quite my sort of thing there were still too many rocks in it for my liking because I was I was sort of moving more towards the geophysics rather than the geology um, and then finding the role at CGG that um, sort of incorporated the more sciencey side of things and the physics um, was was better suited to, to me. Good, brilliant. Good answer. I think Owen liked your answer, Robin, because he was smart. I was just nodding along. As we all know, me and Jessica are not STEM students. So yeah, I think you know what you said was, was quite amusing, but it probably goes against Ryan and Jess's skill set to be at the moment. Just like he, so said, uh, he said science. He said, I actually see something more science than geology. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what we're going to do, Melissa, we're going to move on to you, if you don't mind. So where did you go to university and what did you study? Yep, sure. Um, so I went to the University of Manchester um, and I studied just straight physics. Um, but my master's project was in um, terahertz spectroscopy, so something completely unrelated to geophysics, I guess. Oh, um, Melissa, well, what's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's um, com like I said, completely different from um, geophysics, but uh, I guess quite technical to get into in a, in a webinar. Um, but it's looking at using a technique for, we, we were looking at um, nanomaterials, so really tiny scaled materials, nanowires, things like that. Um, but yeah, so my background is straight physics um, and um, I guess similar to Patrick, I didn't have any geophysics background until um, applying to the role, so. Fantastic. And, and why CGG, Melissa? I think as a physicist, I was always really keen on learning new things and ge geophysics was sort of a new area that I hadn't um, really gone into before. So for me, it was just kind of the curiosity of looking into something a bit new and a bit different for me um, plus CGG has quite a lot of new technologies various areas of science that um, I found quite interesting so I think it was that it was the opportunity to learn quite a lot more um, on the job. Thank you very much Lisa and last but not least Mackenzie over to you. So hi I'm Mackenzie um, I did my undergraduate in geology at the Uni of University of Bristol and then I did my master's in oceanography at the University of Southampton so no physics background there <laughs> apart from a bit in geology I guess. I love the diversity of all your backgrounds though. I think I think it's amazing and, and why did you choose um, CGG Mackenzie? Well I think because I have a bit of a, a more general environmental background, I really like that about CGG and, and kind of their experience in all kinds of earth science data. And also the, the team that I've been hired into, we kind of joke and say it's a bit of a startup within CGG. It's kind of yeah. a bit of a new direction, the environmental team. So that was really exciting for me too. Yeah, and I'm seeing a lot of these like startup kind of areas within companies as well. So I think it really gives you as graduates um, something to get your teeth into, doesn't it? When you kind of start up your own department and things like that. Um, so I want to now move on to your roles at CGG. Um, so if you just want to tell the, the viewers what you kind of get up to on a daily basis um, and what your role actually is at the, the company. So Patrick, we're going to start again with you. Mm -hmm. So uh, my actual role my job title is project geophysicist so um i believe everybody starts off as uh well at least in my area the department is as geophysicist so i'm i guess someone with slightly more responsibilities than that now uh yeah. but uh on, but uh, yeah i work in the uh si unit so uh, seismic interpretation and processing so my area is basically we get given the raw seismic data the stuff that was being captured by boats tugging, uh, tugging streamers of kilometers long across areas of sea or land of like thousands of square kilometers around uh and just gaining the raw seismic data and then we're given that and we need to turn it into something that actually makes sense something yeah. that act, so something that actually looks like the subsurface of the earth um, mm -hmm. and so to do that we uh, apply a huge amount of physical processes a vast majority of stuff that uh, I hadn't even considered would even be a problem before I started working here and so um so I work with a team of uh, roughly 10 people uh, working on projects that can take anywhere from about six months to upwards of maybe two years in order to actually fully properly complete and district and get back to the client mm -hmm. um and over that time we start off as i said from the absolute what is effectively just raw numbers and eventually output uh a massive 3d model of uh of 
whatever the client uh, want, wants, uh, has uh, distributed to us or whatever is actually underneath the earth there. Uh, and so my day-to-day -day working will uh, vary depending on what stage of the project it is and as to what sort of things we actually are working on and what sort of process we are applying. But in very general terms, it is going to be uh, working with a team, uh, usually with uh, maybe one or two people, uh, other people specifically on like one very specific element, but always at the end of the day, coming back and making sure that all of these things work together uh, and actually come together with the rest of the team's work uh, in order to provide something that, uh, in order to make everything as suitable and as valid as possible and uh, coordinate together to uh, create the best product that we possibly can. And do you have, I don't know if this is a question, but do you have a typical client base then? Or yeah. could they be, we just think it's the same thing. Yeah, um, so I think seismic data, I always think oil and gas, so it'll be oil yeah. and gas companies, hmm. I guess, coming to you to, to find out more. But yeah, is there any other kind of industries or employers that, that would use you in your data? Um, it depends. I think that uh, recently we've been looking into more and more different ones. So I've uh, definitely heard that, um, for example, uh, geothermal energy, I believe that we've been getting more uh, employers from recently. Uh, and so that, I think that's uh, a direction that CCG is definitely very interested in heading. Uh, yeah. I'm, I, I wonder if uh, another uh, one of the uh, grads can uh, probably uh, expand more on that, uh, on the uh, on sort of uh, different areas but um so I, th I think classically it maybe has been a uh, sort of oil and gas but i think that cgg is absolutely interested in heading in uh, much more of a variety of ways yeah i think yeah. I mean, you, you, we're yeah. Going... <clears throat> you're right i mean historically uh, historically the technology was which first of it was, was first developed actually primarily by a scientist at cgg was yeah. uh, looking at um uh, oil and gas but also like for mining as well mm -hmm. Yeah. Some, some of our first projects in the UK were actually with the coal board. That's how old some of the, <laughs> some of the, the, the seismic imaging that we, we've been doing in, in the UK is. Um, more recently, you know, we've, we've, we've been doing some carbon capture, some infrastructure, offshore infrastructure, some geothermal um, projects, as uh, Patrick mentioned. Um, so there is a lot more that it looks like, uh, and we're expecting a lot more diversity in terms of projects in the next few years, yeah. um, because the same companies, the same oil and gas companies, I mean, they, they've actually already, I mean, these, a lot of these things kicked off maybe a few years ago, probably 2014, I think, you know? um, but you know, things are starting to gather steam. So yeah, so we are expecting a little bit more diversity because the same oil and gas companies are kind of rebranding themselves as, as yeah. more general energy companies. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. So, um, but you know, um, I guess one thing I think maybe to, 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 to say, in terms of oil and gas itself, um, solving the, the energy transition is a really hard problem, really, mm -hmm. a really hard problem. It's not easy. You know, it's not a simple switch to renewable. Um, it's very, a very difficult problem. And, um, and even, even, if, even in a situation where you might be looking at 60 to 80% of energy being met by renewables, you know, even the... Uh, the International Energy Authority is still predicting that we'll be using oil and gas through to maybe 2070. So, right, okay, so yeah. still a long, it's still a long way. We're seeing that, so we've got a lot of oil and gas companies who advertise on Gradcracker, and traditionally, you know, they were the, the oil and gas, but now they're going into more renewable energy and things like that, so we, we are seeing the transition as well um, on, on, on the website. So, yeah, thanks, Owen and Patrick. So I'm going to move on to Robin now. So your role at CGG. Thank you. Um, so my role at CGG is as a geophysicist. Um, I've been with the company about eight months now. So I started in September of last year. Yeah. Um, and day to day, my role will involve um, sort of, at, well, at the moment, I'm working on some imaging. So it'll be taking the seismic data and um, processing it through sort of velocity models to try and create the best subsurface image possible. So I'm doing some testing on that with some very new sort of processing techniques. Um, so it's quite exciting getting to work with these technologies that are quite early in their development, um, still under development. So sometimes you can get those problems that you can't quite solve and you need to talk to other developers to try and sort them out. Um, but yeah, that's that's mostly what I'm doing at the moment. Thanks, Robin. I bet it's really good to get your teeth into something, though, isn't it? Definitely. You know, when, when you've just been there for eight months. Um, thanks, Robin. So, Melissa, on to you. 
Yeah, so I've been at the company for just a month longer than Robin, about nine months now. Um, and my role is also as a geophysicist, so I do similar um, tasks to Patrick and Robin day to day. Um, so as Patrick said, it's sort of getting that raw data from the acquisition stage and then testing and applying various processes to that data um, so that we get a better seismic image out. For instance, one example could be some noise removal. Um, you have noisy elements in the data that you want to get rid of and then there are various techniques and processes that you can do to remove that noise mm -hmm. um, so that could be one example of something I'd be working on day to day. Um, another large portion of the job is probably the client interaction side of it so we'll have yeah. meetings with our clients quite often and we have to present results and testing that we've done with them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah I think day to day the main tasks I would have are testing and applying processes to data but also interacting with clients and attending meetings and things like that. How do you find that aspect of your role Melissa? Is it you know did you expect to be client facing when, when you joined CGG? I think I was surprised at how quickly you progress mm -hmm. to um, presenting so I think something like a month after I joined the company or two months after I joined the company I was in front of clients and presenting my work which yeah. is quite surprising for me at the time but I think part of the training at the beginning of the um, joining the company was to make sure that we were comfortable with that and to make sure that we had a lot of opportunity to learn how to present technical things and to feel sort of more confident in ourselves and doing that so there's definitely like the um, structure in place for you to learn how to do that you're not just thrown in at the deep end but um, yeah it is quite a quick uh, trajectory to um, being sort of client facing and talking technically with clients. Yeah, I remember that. That was something that me and Jess took out the insight day that we went to a couple of years ago now. It was, you know, the training and development that you're given to be able to present to, to clients really quite quickly. And I think, you know, to be thrown in at the deep end, as it were, and if I may say that, it's, it's, quite, a, it's quite a positive thing because sometimes if you think about things for too much, you know, you come up with all these horror stories and everything else. But what we, what we got from the grads when we attended the insight day was exactly the same as what you just said, Melissa. They, they loved that aspect that they could run that you know run the data do your project and then present it themselves to the client and yeah. um, so yeah I think that was a common theme throughout the day as well and um, so thanks Melissa Mackenzie on to you yes yeah, so I started in January so it's been nearly four months I think I might be the nearest out of us yeah. here um, I'm an environmental science intern um, and so I was hired into the environmental science team under the biodiversity pillar. And we have four other pillars, which is pollution, um, carbon, risk and energy transition. And basically what we do is we, we want to monitor the environmental impacts of different processes and in different industries. And part of what we're doing is kind of a, a newer side of the company is finding exactly where we can fit in and what we can um, see when we gather data and analyze um, what's going on with um, different yeah, different industries, like Owen said, um, the energy transition is a lot more complicated and actually we're monitoring the environmental impacts from um, industries that you wouldn't necessarily think would have dire impacts on the environment. Can you, can you give us a clue about one of those industries? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, just like a, a basic example would be offshore wind industry. Um, so what goes into the construction and operation of that? How is that impacting species negatively? Um, how much carbon are they emitting from the construction stage and, and just all different components like that? Does that make sense? <laughs> it does, yeah, definitely. So then your job would be to report back to these, your clients, and then who would obviously try to make it more environment so it tries to be more environmentally aware if they do like an, another wind farm or something like that yes yeah exactly and also yeah. um another side of things that we tried to consider is um the regulatory part and the policies so um with regards to plastic pollution there's a lot of policies that are coming into place mm -hmm. um so we're kind of trying to identify um where any bottlenecks might be with companies trying to um change how they're operating at the moment and how we can kind of help them by monitoring what they're doing now and kind of suggest how they can change. Great, thank you very much everybody. Yeah, thanks for all the instructions. Um, before we move on and speak to you all about, you know, learning and development and your projects that you've been working on, I just want to tell you all a bit more about the relationship that CGG has with Grad Cracker. Um, so I mentioned earlier, just to smile anyway, mentioned earlier that um, we went on Insight Day. Now these Insight Days guys, for people who are watching, um, 
they, they were brilliant. You know, we really enjoyed them. Me and Jess used to get up at half three in the morning to meet in a little lay by in the middle of York. Then we used to bomb down to the other side of London, which was a good five, five hours away, five, six hours away. Yeah. Yes, I've done it. Yeah, I'm really bad with, with geography. Um, and then we, so we did that. So we met in the middle of York, went on the motorway, and then Owen Smiley Face met us um, at the, the Crawley office. And it was it was a brilliant day. So we met some graduates, met some company managers. Um, Owen took us on a big tour of their offices as well, which we were really impressed by. Um, between you and I, the, the favourite part of our day, and I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this, was actually lunch, because their canteen... Oh is mega. Patrick, you're going to love it when you go, can go back into the office. But the canteen, we've been, the food, yeah, amazing. Oh, I, I, I've been in the office. I, oh, have you? Yeah, awesome. no, I, yeah. <laughs> so I've been around for, for longer than a few of these people, at least. So I don't know, I remember the canteen and the food, don't worry. You've, you've experienced it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so it's worth, we've put the um, the Insight Day onto the CGG Hub on Gradcracker. So there's lots of information on there, lots of videos, podcasts and everything else um, that we took on the day. So make sure after the webinar you go and watch these. Um, I know that Owen, I'm just going to give a bit of a shout out to you now, my love, because Owen worked really hard um, on the CGG hub on Gradcracker. Um, and he always encourages people who are thinking of, of applying to CGG to do their research by visiting the, the hub um, on, on our website. Now, the Hub has got lots of content on there, so pages including things like culture, informative blogs that Owen sends through on a, on a weekly basis. Um, so we do really spend a lot of time to make sure all the content's there so you as grads and interns can go and thoroughly research CGG before you apply for their opportunities. Um, so just before I, I leave you in Jessica's capable hands, don't forget that the opportunities, the interns and the graduate opportunities are open on CGG, so make sure you go and apply. Yes, make sure you do that. Go on to Gradcracker. I was going to say now. Don't go now. Don't go now. Yeah. Go in about half hour. In about <laughs> half an hour. Go and have a look. Um, so, yeah, so exactly as Carla mentioned, go and have a look. Make sure you get your applications in in good time. But obviously, before you do that, do your research. There's so much really, really useful information on that. So, Owen, please can you tell us a bit about the application process and what can students expect if they were going to apply to you this afternoon? Right. Okay. Well, okay. So uh, with the application process, um, I think first thing I'd say is we try to be as transparent as possible in our job adverts. So we try and spell out, you know, I mean, obviously we, we have things like, you know, the competency, competencies you require for the role, but really we, we also have, you know, we try and spell out the eligibility as clearly as possible. And that's, that's hopefully a bit of a hallmark of the whole application process that we try and make it as transparent and as, uh, and, and as open as possible. So for instance, if there was a, if, you know, for instance, with the Easter break, we had a delay in, in um, reviewing one stage application process. So we, you know, we contacted people and said, you know, there will be a delay of yeah, a week, yeah. etc. So we, we, that's the first thing I would say is we try to be as transparent as possible. I would also, the second thing would be that it's probably quite a short application process mm -hmm. compared to most companies. So yeah. typically the, you start off by applying with your CV and a cover letter. Cover, cover letter is quite important because, you know, in all honesty, we get a huge, a huge amount of applications. Um, so we want to know, you've got to tell us why we should consider you, you know, um, against all the other people who apply. And the kind of things we're interested in is not just, you know, your, your attributes, um, but what your actual interest, as, as Patrick said, you know, he, meant, he mentioned his passion for physics. That's really, really important to us. Yeah. Um, you know, that because, you know, the kind of people we want to, the kind of people, you, people the kind of people who are passionate about their own subject, they tend to, if you put them in a if you put them in a situation where you want to work on something, they generally they apply that energy, they apply that passion to whatever it is you yeah. give them, and they take it further than you, than you, than you, than you, than, than, than you ask, and, and you know you get great results. So we we want to see that kind of interest, passion, interest for their own subject, and also that they've actually done some at least preliminary research into what the role involves. So they've gone and gone, okay, what's what is a geophysicist, you know, and then gone, okay, so how do I link? You know, how do I how do how does what I know link to what, what they're going to ask me to do, you know, uh, and just see, and it might just be the basic physics, you know, um, but it's a matter of just showing like, some awareness of mm -hmm. what you're applying for, that you've not just done a kind of a scattergun application. Yeah. Um, so that's the first stage. Um, we try to acknowledge people's applications as quickly as possible. Sometimes, you know, there's a, a short delay, but we do try and acknowledge people's applications um, uh, as quickly as possible. So then they know that, you know, the result of that, the outcome of that 
Um, and then if you're successful at the application, the initial stage, then we, we use automated one-way video interviews. Mm -hmm. um, and we've used them for some years now. That was prior to the pandemic. Um, and, and the reason for that is because we recruit globally for our roles. So it's not just in the UK. For, you know, we don't just recruit UK, UK, you know, people in the UK for UK roles. Um, so obviously people in different time zones, and it's just not practical to hold a telephone interview with someone in Malaysia, you know, or, or some other, you know, Australia, that's a, that's a killer, you know. So um, you, that, that, that's one reason. And the other reason as well is that it is, you know, if you think about it as being a, it's a, a substitute for the traditional telephone interview, it has a lot of advantages, you know, in terms of, you know, um, if I, when I used to, you know, if, I, if I'm on the phone to someone, I've got to listen to their answer. I've got to ask them questions, I've got to listen to their answers and make notes. And it's just all, it all gets too much for me. I can't multitask. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, so no, but joking aside, it's, it's so much fairer. You know, I can get, I can, when, when they, everyone gets the same questions, the same amount of time to read the questions and answer them. And I can review those, their responses multiple times. And, um, yeah. So that, that, that stage of it, okay, I know that a lot of people just really dislike them. And actually, I've been through, I went through an application process myself as a practice to see, you know, to test it, see what it felt like. And actually, I was quite intimidated by it. I started, <laughs> I started stuttering and muttering when, when I started going to ask, you know, really basic questions. Um, but, um, but, you know, it's, we try, you know, it, we're not, it's not, we're not looking to go, you know, we want to, you want to see your best, you know, do your best. You know, everyone's in the same boat. Everyone feels nervous. I mean, we're trying to make it as easy as possible and as fair as possible. So that, that's the second stage. And pretty much everyone goes through that stage, regardless of the role they're applying for. Okay. Um, and then the last kind of, kind of final stage uh, has two parts. So before the, the pandemic, we would have people come in for an assessment day. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and then on the assessment day, you know, you'd have you know, group activities, you'd have a presentation, you'd have a, and, you'd, and you'd have a technical interview. Now, of course, we've switched to a remote process. So um, what happens now is, is if you're successful for the, um, you know, if you, if you get through to, the, to that stage, I give you a buzz, we have a chat, just in general, just to talk you through what, you know, talk people through what the next stage is. Um, then um, we organize a date and it's basically done by MS Teams, Microsoft Teams. And we ask people to, um, you know, we basically test three things. And the first of those things is, you know, their, their own technical knowledge. And that usually involves um, getting to talk about, you know, a final year project or, or well, a current or, or past project um, or, or topic of their choice, you know, um, Technical communication. So Melissa mentioned, you know, the emphasis that we have on on, on, on giving, you know, communicating technical concepts, you know, uh, to our clients. So we, we test that, and that's and we and we do that by asking people to, again to talk about their project. You know, we, we, we see because you know, we put them in a position of being the experts, and we're the non-experts as the interviewers. So can they can they communicate their you know their work to us, what they've done, uh, in a way that we can understand? Uh, and then and then the um, the last thing we kind of test them on an interview is technical agility. So you know. We, as Patrick touched on, you know, he, he came from nuclear physics to geophysics. Uh, and so what we do is we test people uh, by issuing them with a paper to research. So that to research the paper and research around. Uh, and then we ask them, we, we, you know, we ask them to then present on that as well. So that tests their technical agility because can they, can they read that paper in geophysics and transfer their, um, their knowledge of physics and understanding of physics to answer the kind of questions we have and explain how the technology or, or topic that we've given them uh, works. So, so that, that's the geophysics uh, application process. Um, for our other roles, uh, it's slightly different, so they, uh, but not much different. Um, I think Mackenzie will probably talk a little bit more about the environmental side, but in terms of like the geology side, if, uh, we will be recruiting for our geology, a geological group at some point in the near future. And, that the emphasis there is also technical, but it obviously it's, the emphasis is on the geology side as opposed to, to geophysics. Um, and then with the satellite mapping group who are currently recruiting as well, again, okay, they recruit from quite a range of disciplines. Um, so you know, remote sensing, geophysics, mathematics, physics, etc. So again, they're looking for that kind of technical agility. Um, but I would say if you're going to apply for satellite mapping stage, you, satellite mapping group, you, want, you really want to, you know, you've got to convince them that you love satellites. Um, they you know but you know, they, they really do they really like so so um so yeah so that that's that's effectively the the main kind of meat of the application process and then as a kind of to finish it off then we have a short hr interview 
also conducted by MS Teams, which looks at kind of just ask you know ask you about kind of customer service, teamwork, etc. Key key kind of workplace uh, skills, uh, and then we uh, make an offer. Um, and obviously, the drawback of it all being remote is that you get you know we don't have much. We're not able to have a you know lunch with grads in the office. You know the not able to give people a tour of the office. So what we as a kind of a substitute, what we what we do is we arrange a chat with a couple of grads. So for instance, I think. Robin, you've taken part in one yeah. of these, haven't you? Yeah. So, you know, people who've recently joined, can, you know, they make can ask all the stupid questions, all the stupid questions, all the questions they didn't want to ask the interviewers and yeah. you know, feel for, for the other people, you know, the background of the people they're going to, you know, who are like, who, who are going to work with um, and you know, what, what the grads do, you know. So, so yeah. So, and ideally, we, we do like to turn it around as quickly as we can. Um, yeah. You don't like so. Um, so it can take anything between, but it still can take anything between a month or two to two months. Brilliant. Entire, entire. Yeah, that's good. Thank you for talking us through that, Owen. Mm -hmm. So Owen's mentioned multiple kind of the different areas and of the processes. And what I want to hear from the graphics is your kind of experiences. And if you could give the audience listening now, who obviously are thinking about applying to CGG, any hints and tips, and maybe any hints and tips you think maybe landed you the job uh so patrick starting with you um yes well so well i don't think i mentioned it before but i've been here for about a, a year and five months now so basically i started and i was applying uh before the pandemic started so uh i'm not sure entirely how relevant my experience is going to be because uh, i can give hints and tips for uh, when people are applying when the pandemic is all over uh but i guess at least like talk about Patrick, there will um, be there will be a day. There will be a day. There will be a day. But uh, maybe I can give a different perspective on everything. Yeah. But I, 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 well, I can at least talk about like how I felt because I think one of the most uh, formative things that like, other things I recall most from being from going through the uh, application process was how badly I felt I messed up the uh, the one way video interview. I honestly went came through it and I thought I had done terribly because I around that time I had uh, applied for. A few different companies and they I think they'd all use the same sort of software this one-way um, interview software yeah. and every other time the company had been like okay we're going to ask you five questions uh you're going to get the given the question you're going to have as much time as you want to think about it uh and then when you want to go you just hit record and you get to retake as much time uh so okay CGG wants me to do the same thing let's go uh click click okay you have 45 <laughs> seconds to think about this then you have two minutes of doing no retake let's go <laughs> so <laughs> so um i was uh, thrown a little bit for a loop for that one and i uh stumbled a lot yeah. with that but yeah. in, in a way it's almost freeing because thinking back on it everybody else must have done the same thing yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know if Owen must have seen all of these kind of things and how many people have just completely blanked on a question because yeah. of uh, this. But um, so honestly, I thought I'd I'd lost the job there, uh, yeah. but obviously I didn't. So um, uh, so I think things went uh, better after that. And then obviously uh, doing the actually the uh, in person interview was actually really nice. So the way it worked for me was we came into the office and then there, I think there was five other people that we were interviewing with and if, and the vast majority of the time it was all with the sort of people so it kind of built a rapport it, it was made, made very clear at the beginning you aren't competing with each other for a job if if all six of us did well all six of us would have a job then it was it was just yeah. to actually uh make sure that you know seeing how we worked well with others so i guess another tip is just be amiable just yeah. be personable ask questions show yourself that you show your best self and um just and I think the part where um, I sort of, I think, I, th I think the part when I sort of clenched the interview, as I remember that sort of we were given a problem. I think the idea was something like, if a straight line, it was, if you consider this like straight line, and then you convert the dx uh, plus uh, plus y coordinates uh, into, say, a single point, what would it look like if you then went into that single that point space drew a line what would that look like in the original space I remember sort of like sort of thinking about that and figuring it out and then um and then I remember I think I remember Owen specifically saying okay Patrick be quiet now <laughs> and then, I think it's like okay I think I might have this <laughs> and then um, don't give the game away <laughs> yeah, exactly. so uh, I, I, I think that was it. so yeah but uh, overall I think just if you can have fun with it you know just show yourself yeah. and then just show your best self and think that's that's what I would say and yeah that seems to be quite a common answer you know just try and be you I know 
and then everyone I think seems to forget you know when you are applying you know you've got a lovely person at the end of it ultimately that just wants the best and wants you to get the job you know Owen you know I'm sure when you're watching these videos and you're watching them back you're like come on you can do this <laughs> you know you want them to be as good as they can be so just remember you do have someone that what you know that is watching it that wants you to succeed um so Robin you next um obviously your um probably process was a little bit different with it probably being a bit more virtual like Owen said so any hints and tips you can give well I was actually quite lucky I managed to get my um interview and application done just before the pandemic so okay. I I did actually go and see the office in January Brilliant. Um, of 2020 before okay. before everything went downhill um, <laughs> <laughs> so um sort of one key bit of advice i'd give people applying is make sure you sort of tailor your application to the job you're applying for yeah. um because when, when you look through um a website like grad cracker all the different job applications they sort of have quite clear points that you want to hit um in your application process and they're different throughout the different roles um, and that sort of, I used that as a pretty much a checklist of things I needed to make sure were in my cover letter, in my CV, um, make sure you hit those and hopefully keep Owen happy in the process. <laughs> I say that, I'm glad to say that, because yes, anyone's listening, anyone's thinking about applying, I always say, save the job, so it goes in you, you know, you've got to crack a dashboard, you can always refer back to it, use it like a checklist, I mean, it even could be a bit old fashioned, not that I'd encourage printing out, but you could even print it out, tick it, mark it, yes, 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 yes. that's exactly what you should do, yes, Robin. Love it. Um, Melissa, Robin, just a quick question. Um, we haven't mentioned, we mentioned cover letter. Was there anything you feel like you put in your cover letter that helped? Oh, I struggled to remember what I put in my cover letter, actually. Um, I, I think it was it was more sort of the CV shows all of the sort of academic stuff, the work experience you've done. The cover letter, I found just adding a bit of personality to it, mm -hmm. um, actually showing whoever's reading it what you're like as a person, um, as well as just what you've achieved already. Um, yes. And yeah. It was the golfing app, or no, it was, golfing, <laughs> it was the golfing and the app. That was peak my interest. <laughs> How long do you remember all these, Owen? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, love it. Um, Melissa, come to you next. Any hints and tips that you can give? Uh, yeah, so my application process was done fully remotely. Everything was, I had the uh, one-way video interview that I, uh, Owen talked about and then moving on to a sort of call with Owen and an assessment centre day that was all done yeah. from the comfort of my own bedroom, I guess. Um, yeah, so that was slightly different and I guess the type of process that people are going to go, be going through this year. Um, but I think the main thing is the research. So mm -hmm. read around as much as you can. That's one of the things that I definitely did. And I think it's already been mentioned, but you can find information on the CGG website and on the Gradcracker website. And I used both of those quite as extensively as I could to make sure that one, I understood the job role and I knew what I was applying for and I, I had a basic understanding of what day-to-day -day life would be like. But I think also it helps you to gauge interest. You know if you're you're right for the role, if you find it interesting, if you, if you want to keep reading more about it and looking at more articles and that kind of thing, then you know it's for you. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things I found during the application process. So I would definitely encourage people to research and to look at there's a whole... Um, uh, so many things that are there at CGG so many things that you can get involved in yeah. so yeah I think that's really important but I think the other thing uh, that we've already sort of mentioned Patrick said that the one-way interview is quite daunting that kind of thing if you can learn to talk through the problem that you are you've been given so if you can learn to um, state how you're setting up the problem and sort of logically work through it you can show the interviewer not just that you can get to the answer but you know the steps that need to be taken to get to the answer and that you can set out that problem problem logically as a physicist would or a mathematician would or a geophysicist would mm -hmm. that's really what they're interested in I know that in my one-way interview some of the questions I definitely stumbled on and maybe didn't get to exactly the right answer but it was important to Owen and to the recruiters that 
I knew how to go about tackling that problem. They're looking for people who can solve problems at the end of the day. So yeah. as long as you can set it up and show them that, you know, you know how to go through the steps, I think that's quite important. That's a really lovely point as well. You know, and Owen, it's, it's, it's a good point to make that, you know, you might not get to the right answer. Yeah. But it's the thought process of how you got there. And, you know, maybe the technical stuff or, you know, finding the right answer, you know, you can help within the long run if it's additional training or whatever, but it's the thought process, being a good problem solver, being a good communicator. Again, and a lot of, um, you know, when you're reading the job descriptions, they'll say that, but don't underestimate how important that is because, you know, technically, you know, a lot of these employees will be able to teach you the additional stuff you need to know, but if you've got those little, you know, kind of key competencies, that's what the recruiters are looking for, aren't they? Absolutely. And it's the passion as well, isn't it? I suppose you can you can tell when somebody's passionate about something. And I think if that if that comes across, like Melissa said about you know do, doing your research, understanding who CGG is and everything else, and you come across that you know how passionate you are about the subject, about the employer. You know when when I know we, when we've interviewed for Grad Cracker, you can tell them people have done the research and they know what we're all about, and that it's it's. Um, it's addictive is that isn't it you think oh you know they're they're excited like owen said they're excited that makes you excited and everything else so yeah really try and sell yourselves yeah do 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 mackenzie next say anything else that you'd like to add to all this brilliant advice yeah so obviously i agree with what everyone said um but i just really with what melissa said about the research i was doing things like if cgg released a webinar that wasn't actually necessarily relevant to the field that i was interviewing for i'd want to watch it so that if the opportunity to kind of put that into the interview that i have that kind of extra level of of interest mm -hmm. um and when you're doing that research you'll find that um cgg are all about innovations so i think if you can find a way to slip that into the a time okay. that you've been innovative <laughs> am I giving too much away Owen <laughs> no, 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 that's all. That's good. That's good. Um, then I think yeah that's really appreciated and and yeah like we said about being passionate I kind of came away thinking I was way too over enthusiastic I I almost oh. felt a bit silly when the phone ended I was like oh that was way over the top it was, <laughs> I felt almost too casual by the end of it but actually I think that showed that yeah. we were on the same wavelength and, and that we were both passionate about the project or the job ahead. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. Just going back, can we give, could you give an example of maybe anything that you did say, you know, obviously you've mentioned the word innovation, but what in particular did you say? I mean, the, I don't want students that are listening now to think, oh, I'm just going to copy that idea. But, you know, what in particular did you say? Um, it was actually not to do with anything scientifically technical it was actually an experience that I had in um, another job that was about netball umpiring and and um, basically a problem arised and it was how I thought through that problem and how um, we came to an agreement basically that everyone was happy about and, and yeah. <laughs> you know what? And that, again, yeah. Another fantastic point because you know any students that are listening now you know don't underestimate the importance of doing additional stuff outside of the curriculum you know whether it be join a stem society whether it be join a, a you know a sports team or whatever because it gives you those kind of life skills those you know experiences mm -hmm. that you can talk about and you know that might have been a, a little you know icing on the cake which actually landed you the job Mackenzie but at the time when you're going through it you probably didn't think that was going to land you a job no. Yeah, exactly. That was one of the questions that I thought that I kind of um, nosedived on, because obviously, it's, I, I mean, we had talked in, in depth about other technical things, but um, and actually another thing I'd say is don't be afraid to say, oh, can I have a minute just to make some notes to myself and think about an yeah. answer to the question? Yeah. That really yeah, helped me. That's brilliant. Have you got anything you want to add to that, Owen? Yeah, I do. So that's bang on, actually. So I think, you know, because not many people actually have experience of, our se of the geoscience sector. It's actually mm. quite difficult to get experience. I mean, who does? I mean, it's quite difficult to even do a geology level these days, you know, or, I mean, and geography is optional. So any kind of geo element is actually quite hard to, you know, people don't get much ex exposure to it these days. So um, that, what Mackenzie just said about, you know, that whole, that netball example, that's bang on. Um, yeah. And, you know, you know, everyone here, Robin, Melissa, Patrick, myself, you know, we all had strong, extracurricular examples. My one was from being um, the armourer of a fencing club, you know, so I used to fix health and safety, fixing swords, etc. You know, a bit, bit random. Um, and also, you know, 
I'm not, Mackenzie's giving an, an Apple example. I won't say what Melissa, Robin and Patrick's were, but they were all to do with volunteering, show, you know, setting up their own society, that, that type of stuff, you know, sporting, sport, sports club stuff, responsibilities, you know. And then all of them in their interviews drew on those examples, you know, so and that's really, really important. And um, anyone that doesn't know, hopefully the audience that listening should, if you are part of the STEM society, remember you can have a free hub on Gradcracker and basically we can promote how you amazing, how amazing you all are to our employers and then our employers can like your hub, which pretty much is an invite to apply. So anyone that doesn't know, make sure you go to Gradcracker and have a look after this and get involved or contact my colleague Georgia. Um, Owen, sticking with you, what are the key attributes you are looking for during the application process? So I know we've kind of talked upon some of the stuff that innovation, being a good communicator, team player, problem solver, anything else to add to that or do you think we've nailed it all? So obviously the technical element is important, you know, whether you're being maybe a geologist, a geophysicist, or environmental scientist, you know, you need to have the, the right technical qualifications. So that, that gets you over the, you know, gets you, gets you over, you know, gets you over the first kind of hurdle. After that, you really do need to show evidence of um, your know, awareness of things like you know, customer service, teamwork, leadership. Yeah. You know, that's really fundamental. You, know, you, you need to have those soft skills. The technical alone is not enough. Um, yeah. um, and then, yeah, and then to, beyond that, you know, that, that, as I said before, that technical agility, you know, looking, doing their research off their own bats about, you know, um, I mean, for instance, I, I as, as, we've said, as you said earlier, you know, I actually link Gradcracker really heavily. You know, the grad, our Gradcracker hub is not necessarily, not just designed to advertise CDG in our roles, it's actually almost a, almost more designed to actually, you know, enhance our application process. You know, we link to various blogs, we link to the Insight Day, you know, we'll be linking to this webinar, you know, so people get a good insight and, and a good idea of what the role involves and, and can, mm. and so I quite often link, when I acknowledge people's applications, I quite often provide various links. Yeah. Um, and there's a question, not to give too much away, but in the video interview, the automated video interview, one of the questions you ask about you know, some, something you know, related to CGG and given all the resources I've given people, if yeah. they aren't able to answer that satisfactorily, then, uh, you know, you, you know, not, <laughs> what, yeah. why should I be in, you know, yeah. anyone yeah. said, like Melissa said, you know, and Robin and Patrick and McKinsey, you know, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Take advantage of those resources, you know, yeah. uh, and do your research. So that, that's pretty fundamental. And I would say that that's where 50% just to throw a statistic into the air. But it is about right. About 50% of people fall over on that, on that basic research. And, and, and given all that, given everything, uh, given Gradcracker, I mean, I, when I, Gradcracker didn't exist when I, when I was looking for jobs. Yeah. It was a right old hassle, but, you know, it's, it's designed <laughs> for students. It's, it's actually you know, like you go to the CCG website and it's, it's okay. But it's it's more client facing, like mm. a lot of these things are, you mm. know. Whereas you know, business, it's a business to business kind of setup. Whereas this grad cracker is designed so that technology companies can, you know, educate so. students what they do. So why why not use everything? You know, all the blogs, all the webinars, you know, everything that's available. I think it's about that. Oh, and I think it's about showing off as well. You know, we, we do have the students in mind when obviously everything that we do on Gradcracker is all about you guys out there who are trying to find either a graduate opportunity or a placement. But it's about showing that off as well, Owen, isn't it? Like um, Mackenzie said earlier on about, um, you know, doing her research and everything else. And it's about telling you as well that the Mackenzie's, for example, I'm picking on you, Mackenzie, but Mackenzie's done her research. So, oh yeah, well, Owen, we watched the um, webinar that he did with Grad Cracker. You know, you want to hear that. And yeah, sometimes absolutely. I think, yeah, absolutely. sometimes I think that students are a bit, not embarrassed, but reluctant to say, do you know what? I read your blog on Grad Cracker about X, Y, Z. And this is what you, you mean, you'd just be lapping this up, wouldn't you, sir? To a certain extent, yeah, flattery, you know, get yeah. you know, but, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, but, <laughs> no, you can just, as you, as you said, you know, anyone, anyone who's done experience in recruitment, you, you kind of know when someone's genuine, and genuine. Yeah. oh wow, you know, and you know, um, so yeah, no, that's, that's, that's really important, yeah, that, that general just energy, you know, they want to learn yeah. things, they want to discover new things, you know, they want to find out new things, yeah, it, it just comes through, um, and you can forgive a lot, you, know, you can forgive you know someone tripping up on something or you know an error on that or but if if they if you can tell they've got that potential they've got that interest real interest because uh, you can't buy that you can't make it no. up you know it's, no it's, you can't so. uh, you can't train it i guess <laughs> no you can't <laughs> 
I mean, just um, just thinking kind of like the next kind of steps then. So if someone is successful um, and hopefully look into the future after COVID restrictions have been lifted, will the students be based at Crawley? Um, so what, yeah, like, yes, kind of. Yeah, so so it's it's still under discussion in all honesty, but um, th yes, yeah, so there's different roles. So like for the geophysics and for the environmental science, they will they will be head, they will be based out of Crawley, um, and you, Probably we're looking at a hybrid model, you know, three days in, two days, two days out, if you want, you know, degree of flexibility. Some people may want to be in, in, you know, um, and some people may may not prefer to have more you flexibility, but it will be on a flexible team basis, I think. There mm -hmm. won't be like some hard rule which says everyone does three days in, yeah. three days out. It will be, it might suit a certain team to operate in a certain way. Yeah. Um, but there will be some, definitely some office yeah. time uh, and probably because it's so important particularly for new people yeah um, i mean and even for people like you know you've you know, got a huge amount of experience everyone knows who i am mm -hmm. um but you you i'm burning through to a certain extent you know all, even the experienced people are kind of burning through their kind of social capital a little bit you know because they're not building new you know you know there's none, none of those chance encounters or mm. chats after a meeting it's all very you know on to the next meeting you know off you know I, I, I need to get out i need to go for a walk you know i've been sitting at my computer for hours whereas if you're in the office you know how i mean i was thinking at the time i'm like 20 minutes in the morning for tea 20 minutes in the <laughs> afternoon lunch might slip a little bit okay you know you know what a meeting you might end up having a good chat after one you know so all of that that you know people are miss you know, it's a real social thing and uh, and then for grads, you know, one of the, thing, one of the things I really benefit, benefit from, I'm sure Patrick will, will, will um, corroborate this, is, you know, being able to, when you're part of the team, if someone's having a conversation, you know, you can listen in and learn. Yeah. You know, if you're sitting and you've, all you've got is an MS Teams chat channel or whatever, it's not the same, you know. Um, so, yeah. But that human element is so important to what we do, you know. Um, so, I mean, we've adapted, but it's not. Yeah. As soon as we can kind of get some face-to-face -face in person, element that would be really good. I think the offices are really um, set up for that out there as well in Crawley because it is that kind of that team environment when you're, you know, you're walking between the meetings I remember me and Jess being led around and it was very oh morning how are you what are you, what are you doing today and then you, you know you'd go on to the other person so it's very it's very based upon um, being able to chat to people and, and, and meet other people as well in the business. Yeah what do you think Patrick? Uh, yeah, no, obviously, um, the way that everything's sort of set up is really, really easy to. So the way that we have it set up in the offices is that we have uh, basically, you know, strips of you know, desks uh, mm -hmm. with, a, with uh, big aisles in between uh, and everyone sort of back facing each other. So it's not like what you see, you know, sort of. I know 90s American movie sort of office where everything's in cubicles or everything's very <laughs> open. Everything has standing desks actually. Standing desks are something I really miss. Um, yeah. And uh, that's, those, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great for your posture. Um, but no, it's really what it means is it's really easy uh, to say um, if somebody's like, talking behind you, even if they're completely different team, you can just sort of uh, wheel your your chair over and just sort of like poke, poke your head and say, you know, what, what's going on here? What's what's uh, what's happening? Uh, it's, it's, it means it's very easy if uh, you need a bit of help, then somebody can just put, oh yeah, it's just the guy. There was a guy that worked on that uh, a while ago. You know, he's just he's just over there. Go uh, go take a look at that. Um, you know, occasionally if uh, things have been particularly hard, you know, we'll just take under take five ten minutes. Just everybody in uh, in like a sort of vicinity will just sort of like just crowd around and just have a bit of a chat. So and just, just to blow off steam. Um, it means that everything is very fluid and nothing's really sort of set about how you're supposed to do it. Everything is really easy to ask for help. Uh, it's really easy to just um, move around socially, you know, physically and every, every other way. So it's, um, it's it, it, it feels like a very amiable and very open environment, yeah. uh, which is really helpful and sort of, it's just almost exactly the sort of environment I was looking to uh, go into when I was applying for a job actually. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks, Patrick. I think um, we've mentioned today about the different projects that you've been working on as well. And just to, to stick with a, a similar theme, Patrick, so um, the social aspect um, of CGG and I know we just remember when we went, there's, there's a games room, we can do yoga sessions. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was the darts table, a darts board. There's, there, there's a darts board, there's yeah. two pool tables, there's a couple of table tennis tables. Um, yeah. So yes. Yeah, 
I, I'm pretty sure. Area as well, don't you? Like a library, a little bit of a library. Yeah, it's a little bit of a library, sort of like sort of like board games area. There's some uh, table football tables. It's, it's yeah. actually really nice and sort of. I, I got surprisingly good at table tennis, like just <laughs> in the three months that I was there. And I I, I kind of want to go back purely in order to like get my skills back up again. <laughs> You guys need to start training. You've got a champion yeah. here. There's, genuinely, like we have uh, table tennis tournaments, and there are some very good people, and very yeah. special people <laughs> around. Just because every day, every lunchtime, they just go and spend half an hour play, playing table tennis. If you do that every day, <laughs> yeah. you get very, you get surprisingly good, surprisingly quickly. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, but from you know, at the moment, you know, we're still going through lockdown restrictions. I know they're being lifted, but. What kind of um, social aspects have you enjoyed at CGG under the restrictions that we've currently been in? So I think I'm going to go to um, Owen for this. Uh, not Owen. Sorry, Owen. I love you, but no, Robin. I was looking at you and thinking Robin. Um, so, Robin, what are the social things that you've been taking part in? Um, yeah, so um, I think... During your time at CGG. I, I think at the towards the end of last year, um, there was a pub quiz that I really enjoyed. So um, it was with some other sort of quite new graduates. So I was in a team with Melissa as well. Um, and it was a group of six of us who were quite new. I think the, the person who'd been there the longest was sort of just over a year or something. Um, so it was really nice getting to talk to some other graduates doing the pub quiz. Um, and then also just hang around after the pub quiz for quite a long time, just chatting to them. Um, and another event I've really enjoyed was the Christmas party, although it wasn't sort of what the Christmas party would normally be. Um, we managed to get together as a team and do different activities. So um, we had some live, well, virtual live music um, <laughs> and, and some other things going on during the, an afternoon. Um, which was just really nice to actually get to chat and hang out with some of the people in the team that sort of I haven't been able to do having been working remotely the whole time um, yeah. because during a, the sort of general day-to-day -day work everything all the conversations are quite transactional you you talk to someone for a particular reason there's sort of no chat in between time so it was quite nice to have um, an an afternoon sort of dedicated to just just chatting to people and enjoying yourself a bit yeah yeah and just just getting to know people as well yeah definitely brilliant well thank you very much guys i told you this hour just absolutely zooms right by doesn't it um but thank you for the cgg for joining us today and um, don't forget that me and jess and owen mentioned that they, they are recruiting for their internship and graduate opportunities so go onto the CGG hub and um, to find out more and get your applications in. And um, don't forget this recording will be live on the CGG hub av as of tomorrow. Um, so tomorrow morning, this will be there. And we'll break it up into bite-sized chunks, which will be in the Grad Cracker Career Centre and on the CGG hub um, towards the middle of next week. And like everybody said, Jess is sick and tired of saying it out you love, but like everybody says, everybody says, make sure you do your research. The hub is there for you to watch all the videos, watch the insight, watch this webinar again, and don't forget to show off, you know, tell Owen that you've seen all these things, you've watched the webinar and um, give us feedback. You know, if you want to let us know how we, how it's gone, um, just drop me and Jess an email and we can um, gladly accept that feedback from you all. Um, next week we are joined by the BBC, so me and Jess are back, um, same time, same place, BBC, they are recruiting at the moment as well, um, you'll have all heard of the, the household name BBC, but you might not know what life could be like for you as a STEM student, so thank you everybody today for joining us, and I shall see you all next week. We will, see you later everyone. See you soon, thanks everybody, bye-bye. Bye. 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 bye.